Hello guys, good evening. Welcome once again to the class. Thank you so much to the people that is always on time. Thanks for that, okay? Nice to see you again. Good evening. Okay, so I think that the other ones are going to be connecting through, through the time. So um, it is already eight o'clock. It is a pleasure to see you one more time, guys. Thank you so much, as I said before, for coming always on time. So today we're going to start the class, but let me ask you, can you hear me clearly? Yes. All right, perfect. Thank you so much. So do you remember that yesterday we left some exercises that we didn't finish them? So today we are going to complete that part. <clears throat> and we are going to start the class with that, okay? So just let me see, let me share the, the slides with you. All right, so it was this one. The, the true or false part. Remember that? Did you try to do the exercises of something? Well, nobody's saying anything, but I'm going to choose some people randomly. If I say your name, please um, participate. So let me see. Um, Gathering Ramirez, you're going to help me with sentences number one. Monica Calderon with number two. Uh, let me see who else. Um, Beatriz Inocente, number three. Uh, Lisette Castillo, number four. Angelica, number five. Roxana, number six. Tatiana, number seven. See Eric Ramirez number eight and Monica. Oh, there's actually two Monicas. Okay, Monica Escobar, the last one. Okay, so please go ahead and do it, guys. Let me hear your answers. There is a duck. True. True, yes. Here we have a dog. Correct. Very good. Number two. Is that false? The other ones? Let me see. We got one here. Yeah, it is actually false because we just have two. Very good. Number three. There is a snake. It's false. False. Let me check it right here. Yes, it is false. There's no, it's not a snake. The next one, please. There are some flowers. What did you say? True or false? True. Okay, there are some flowers. Yes, here we have the flowers. As you can see it over there. Thank you. The next one. There is a purple jacket. It's true. It's true. Let me see. Yes. Here there's a purple jacket. Very good. The next one. Hello.
Any volunteer guys? Because probably the other. There are two guitars, false. There are two, the word, we do not say guitars, we say guitars, okay? There are two guitars. guitars. Is that false, you said? False. False, let me see. All right, yes, very good. The next one. There, there is a pencil, true. There is a pencil, true. The pencil is this part right here, very good. The next one. There are two socks, is true. True, let me see, yes, here we have them, the two socks. Very good, true. And the next one. Well, help me please, Mr. Mario, now that I see you connected. Normal. This one, can you see the one that I'm pointing? Yeah, yep. this one. Yeah. True. It's true. Eh, está abajo del patito. Eh. Let me check that. Let me see. Oh, yeah. It is uh -huh. true. Very true. good. And the last yeah. one. There are False. two False. black cannon. False. Yes, because we just have one black cannon. Okay. All right, very good. Thank you so much, guys. Let me see this part. I will need some volunteers. Volunteers, I'm not going to say any name. If you want to help me, please say your name and tell me the answer. Are there honey apples on the table? Are there any apples on the table? Very good, are there? See? Are there any potatoes in the box? Yes, here. You see, are there any potatoes? Yes, once again, these, right? Very good. The next one. Is there any orange juice on the table? Is there, very good, is there. The next one. Are there any pears in the box? Very good, are there? Thank you. The next one. Are there any tomatoes in the box? Very good, are there? Thank you. Next one. Is there any butter in the fridge? Is there any butter? Is there any butter in the fridge? Very good. And the last one, guys. Are there. Are there. I think that this part is very clear. And these exercises, they were really easy, right? So thank you so yes. much for participating, guys. We are going to go to the last part. And I know that part, it was kind of difficult, but let me see what you got. See this part right here. And I will need a volunteer. Two apples are on the table. There are. Does someone has something different? There are some apples on the table. Repeat it again, please. There are some apples on the table. There are some apples, or you can say there are two apples on the table, but that's very good. Thank you so much. Very good. Number two, any volunteer? Okay. 
There isn't a boy exit in the street. That someone has something different. Alguien más tiene algo different. Is there? Is there? Does an ATM exist next here? No, no, number two. Number two. Repeat it again, Mario, please. There Mario. isn't a boy exist in the street. Okay. You said there isn't a boy exist in the street. Yesterday, I mentioned to you that uh, there is and there are are similar to the word exist. So as you can see right here, it is not necessary to say exist one more time because there is and there are automatically means exist. There is and there are significant exist. Entonces, porque acá, here we have uh, exist. We are going to say there isn't a boy in the street. Es lo que vamos a omitir. Vamos a omitir esta parte de exist. Exist. Okay. Very good. So, Be number care. three. Yes, tell me. Repeat, por favor. There isn't a boy in the street. Thank you, teacher. Okay, number three. Any volunteer? Volunteers. Is there oh, an ATM near here? Is there an ATM near here? Very good. Thank you. That was completely right. So number four, any volunteer? There is a party will exiting tomorrow. Recuérdense que no tenemos que repetir el verbo el este exit. Exist. Ah, there is a party will tomorrow. No will. No tenemos que repetir. Is in future. Sería nada más. There is a party tomorrow. Very good. There is a party tomorrow. Hay una fiesta mañana. ¿Por qué no se repite el will? Or. Lo podemos decir, pero tenemos que, the, en este caso sería, there will be, let me put it here, put it right here, it will be something like this, there will be a party tomorrow, 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 or we can say there, there is a party tomorrow. Both of them are correct. La dos está okay. correct. Podemos decir. Okay. So, any other question? Is it clear and clear? Yes. So let me see, let me go to the number five. Someone help me. Number five. There, there are a lot illnesses in the 14th century. Very good. There are a lot of illnesses in the 14th century. Very good. Number six. Teacher, y esa no se puede decir, there are some. Right, we can use some. Recuérdense que ayer vimos algunas con some. Sí lo podemos utilizar, pero como some y a lot of. Si tienen el mismo significado o son sinónimos, es por esa razón que en este caso podemos utilizar ambos. Ok, thank you. 
All right. So, and the last one. There is hardly any people were at the meeting. Oh, no, it was number six. Can you repeat it again, sir? Can you repeat it again, please? There is, there is hardly any people were at the meeting. Okay. Desde el momento en que tenemos people, sabemos que people, it's el plural, the person, right? So, mm -hmm. si ya tenemos plural, are we going to use there is? There are. There are. There are. Okay. Very good. So. Teacher, ahí sería, there are any people at the meeting. Exactly. There are. No. No, el any ya no lo usaría. There are, there are some people, there are uh, some okay. people at the mid. So, in the last one. Me, teacher. There are a Starbucks is next to, to the bank. There are? Are you sure that is there are? There is. There is. Why? Sí, there is. Estamos hablando solo de Starbucks. Is... Starbucks. Sí, porque el nombre del, del establecimiento es Starbucks. Exactamente. No es Starbucks. Ajá. Aunque vemos que lleva la S y automáticamente nosotros sabemos que cuando lleva S es plural, en este caso la marca ya trae. La marca, S. exacto. So we cannot modify it. Y algo que nos okay. puede. Okay. Thank you. Algo que nos puede dar una pista de que hablamos del singular es la letra A al inicio. Acuérdense, A and AND, both of them, we use them for singular, not plural. Thank you. All right. So I think that is pretty much clear. Were, were the exercises difficult for you guys? Were they difficult for you? Did you feel that that was so difficult that you couldn't do it by yourself? Un poquito, no? Teacher, en las seis me quedo duda. What's your question or your doubt? What's the doubt? Eh, sería en negativo. There aren't. No. O sería there are some. There are some. There are some people at the meeting. There are some people at the meeting. Pero si la forma de arriba está diciendo que no hay ninguna persona en, en nuestra respuesta va a ser positiva. O sea, porque dice any, a eso se refiere, a que no hay. But oh, yo me have, we have an adverb, tenemos un adverbio before that says hardly. En ese caso dice casi no habían personas en la, eh, casi no habían personas en la reunión. So, uh, okay. okay, we are going to say there are some. La vamos a cambiar al sentido positivo, aunque la de arriba tenga un sentido negativo. Ok. So, any other question, guys? Teacher, hardly, ¿qué significa? Hardly. Es como casi no, difícilmente. It has a, some different meanings depending on the context. Dependiendo en el contexto. Pero generalmente se utiliza para decir difícilmente. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. So I think that is pretty much clear, guys. So um, we are going to go to the topic that we have for today. The topic for today, as I mentioned to you before or yesterday, I told you that today we're, we were going to see the 
a n some and n but today we're going to see how do they work in the english language or how we can use them in any sentence or something like that so we are going to go deeper to this topic and we are going to learn how to use them i know that you already have some ideas about what is this about because you were doing some exercises in the platform. I have been checking your answers and things like that. And I know that probably some of you have already checked some information on the internet, right? But we're going to, to see how we can use them in English language. So I will need some help. Let me see, Miss, uh, Miss Kelia Osorio, can you please help me with reading? The first part. This a part. And, and we use a and articles with singular countable nouns. My brother has a dog and my sister has a cat. There is an accident on the corner. All right. Thank you so much. As it says over there, we use a and n and those are part of the articles. They are articles and we can use them as a singular countable noun. Con eh, pronombres contables en singular. Articles. All right. So thank you so much. As you can see here, we have some examples, but now we're going to see how A works. So let me ask for some help. Beatriz Inocente, can you please help me reading this part over here. This part. Hey. Is this user when the next word start with a consonant song, a book, a guitar, a friend, a university, the start of the word university, songs like you, a consonant song. Ok, aquí tenemos algo un poco contradictorio. Si ustedes se fijan, if you can notice, la explicación para A dice que solamente es with consonant sound. Y we have a book, a guitar, a friend, pero ¿qué pasa con la palabra university? University, no ¿Qué? empieza con una vocal, es que ese es eh, que empiece con un sonido, eh, ¿cómo decirle? Como Apple empieza con A, Ice, eh, Orange, pero ese es university, entonces no empieza, con, empieza como que empezara con Y. Exactly. Okay. The sound, mm -hmm. the phonetic sound, the sound of phonetic that we do in English is completely different than a vowel. Completamente diferente de un sonido de una vocal. If you notice, if you can notice when we pronounce the word you, university, no decimos university. So, it will be, or it will sound a little bit weird, sonaría raro, if we say a university, but in English we say a university, university. That's why this word, it is the only one that we can use with the letter A, even though it starts with the, with the vowel, all right? So, let me see, Gloria Ramirez, can you please help me reading this part? And if you said when the when the next word starts with a vowel song, an apple, an ice cream, an orange, and a horse, the letter H in this word is silent. So it sounds like the, like a star with a vowel. Okay, very good. As it says over there, and is used when the next word 
starts with the vowel sound. Okay? So it says an apple, an ice cream, an orange, an hour. Hour. Si se fijan acá tenemos otra. Aquí. Escucha como que empieza con A. Right, right. That's why, aunque veamos que tiene la H, but the, uh, the letter H is silent. When we pronounce this word, our, our, as you can see, you can hear our, our. our. So it, it makes the our. sound as a sound of the letter A. That's why, even though it, is, it is starts with a consonant, we are going to use it with N, okay? Aunque empieza con una consonante, Estas forma parte de las únicas que podemos utilizar con N, aunque inicie con una consonante. Yeah. So it's very important, guys, that you know these differences. Yeah. Es importante que sepan estas diferencias. Why? Because if you have an exam or if you have an evaluation and you don't know or if you see those words, Si ven la palabra university, como saben que empieza con U, se van a poner N. No, right? So keep that in mind. So for future evaluations or for future exams, you already know this. So let's go. Yes? Repeat, please. What do you want me to repeat? What? An N. N. Okay. Uh -huh. Okay. As I was saying, esta es la única palabra, our, que la vamos a poder utilizar con N. Even though, aunque, vemos que empieza con H, right? But, in this case, the letter H is silent. That's why when, we, when it comes to pronunciation, the pronunciation that we do, it is our. Listen, our. It sounds like a letter H. Suena como una letra A, and that's why we are going to use it with N. Teacher, um, si nos encontramos así, otra palabra que empiece con una consonante y suene como vocal, that's, siempre se usaría el AM. Yeah, correct. Remember, en, por regla general, by by our general rule, por una regla general, si la palabra empieza con consonante, la, la regla dice, si la mayoría de palabras empiezan con consonante, solo le agregamos la letra A, right? La segunda regla dice, a la mayoría de palabras que empiezan con vocal, le agregamos N. Pero existen, there are some exceptions. As, in every language, in todos los lenguajes, we have some exceptions. And the exceptions are when it comes to pronunciation. That wh that's why you have to be really careful with the pronunciation. But when it comes to the pronunciation, the sound that we do, it will give you the answer or that will help you to decide whether to use A or to use N. Is it Thank clear? Sure. Okay, cool. So Thank you, teacher. Okay, so let's move on. Here we have uh, some and any. So I will need, uh, let's see, someone who does not participate that much. Rosa Maya. Uh, we ask some and any with plural nouns and account, accountable nouns. Some is generally used in positive sentence. Hasta donde, teacher? No, the next one, just the next part. Any is generally you said in negative sentences. Okay, leave it there. Thank you so much. As it says over here, guys, the word some 
is generally used in positive sentences. And the word any, it will generally be used only for the negative sentences and also questions. But some, it will, most of the time, it will be used for positive. Okay, so I will need some help with the, uh, let me see, with the first two examples. Fatima Estrada, can you help me with the first two examples, please? Hello, oh, Miss, Miss Fatima, hello, are you there? Well, apparently she's not there. So let me ask Hazel. Puedo yo, teacher. Oh, yeah, you. Tell me. Give me, help me reading that. Okay. I have some information for you about fly to par Paris, verdad? To Paris. Posit Paris. Positive and countable. I don't have any information for you about fly flight to Paris. Negative in uncountable. Okay. Sigo, teacher. No, leave it there. Thank you so much. So, as you can see here, it says, I have some information for you about flights to Paris. As we can see here, the sentence, it is in a positive way. And, porque la información no la podemos contar, we can account the information. So that's why it says that it's an uncountable noun. Es un eh, sustantivo incontable. And as you can see here, the word some, la palabra some, it is used, está siendo usada, in a positive sentence. Okay? What about number okay. two? In the number two, as we can see, aquí tenemos la negación already. So, because it is in negative, porque está en negativa, tenemos que utilizar any. I don't have any information for you about flights to Paris. E, de nuevo tenemos information. Que es un sustantivo incontable. Porque hay información que no la podemos contar. Contar en el, no en el sentido de decir, sino que contar en el sentido de una cuenta. I don't know if you understand what I'm saying. De quantificar. Yeah, exactly, like that. All right, so I will need any other volunteer for the next two examples. For example, teacher. For example, what? And any information? I don't get, what, what is your question? Eh, o sea, un ejemplo de any en cuanto a los incontables. Ok. Todo lo que no podemos contar, o como dijo Mario, what was the word, Mario? Incontable. Cuantificar. Oh, cuantificar. Yeah. Something that we cannot count. Algo que nosotros no podamos Contar o cuantificar, as he said, something that, ah, we, yeah. like those, esas cosas, we are going to use para el negativo any y para el positivo some. Some. All right. That's oh, it. Okay. All right. Thank you, teacher. Okay, you're welcome. So, any volunteer for the next or the Me following? Teacher. Okay, go ahead. We met some friends uh, for drinks after work yesterday. Positive plural contable. Okay. I didn't see any friends there on Tuesday. Negative plural contable. Okay, very good. It says the number one. We met, nos conocimos in past, right? We met some friends for drinks. Conocimos algunos amigos, para tomar después del trabajo. Yes, en este caso, friends, amigos, es contable. Why? Why it is contable? Porque es contable. 
because if it if I'm working like like an example, if I'm working in a company, I know how many people works there. Estoy trabajando en una empresa y en mi departamento yo puedo saber cuántas personas son. So I can count them. Los puedo contar. So that's why this noun, friends, is countable. But it's even though it is a plural. Yes? So what about number two or the next one? It says, I didn't see any friend there on Thursday. No vi a ningún amigo allí. ¿Qué día es este? Thursday? Jueves. All right, cool. Jueves. We have here any used for the negative form one more time. And friends, it is a countable noun. Why? Because I was telling you before, we can count them. Because we know, for example, if you said, I am going to go with my friends to the beach. If you say that, voy a ir con mis amigos a la playa. You know how many people, you know how many friends are going to be with you. So they just saben cuántos amigos van a ir. So that's why this now it is come. So I will need another volunteer for the last two sentences. Me teacher. Go ahead. I think he will have some time to speak to you today. Positive and comfortable. I don't think he will have any time to speak to you today. Negative and countable. Okay, as you know, the time, el tiempo, en este caso, aunque nosotros sabemos que el tiempo, eh, por lógica o, o la lógica que nosotros tenemos, we know that we can count. Sabemos que podemos contar que minutos, segundos, horas, but... For a general rule, for una regla general of grammar in English, the grammatic in English, el sustantivo time se toma como parte de incontable. Aunque, para nuestra lógica, en nuestro idioma, sabemos que el tiempo lo podemos contar, ya sea por hora, segundos, minutos. But in English, the noun time, it comes part of the uncountable nouns, okay? Teacher, mm -hmm. y um, si estuviera una hora exacta, ¿cambiaría contable o seguiría así incontable? For example, let's see. I think we will have some time. Recuérdense que en este caso, eh, si decimos una hora específica, por ejemplo, 8 o'clock, eh, en este caso, ya no forma, ya decir la hora, the time specifically, ya no sería un now. Sí, no sé si me entiende. Los sustantivos, en, si digo una hora específica, ya no formaría parte de un now. Entonces, por eso, por ende, yo ya no podría utilizar some. En automatically y automáticamente estas reglas no aplicarían para nada. Recuérdense, estas ah. reglas que estamos viendo ahorita solo son por, para el uso de A, N, some, and N. Thank you. Y es right. como para palabras generalizadas. Exactly. No específicas. Okay. Exactly, like that. Thank you. So you are like my translator, man. To help me to translate <laughs> some words that I cannot even say it in Spanish. <laughs> Even okay. I don't know how to speak. <laughs> That's good. Thank you so much for that. Okay. All right. So here we have once again some general information, like um, like some more examples, like countable and non uncountable nouns that we can use uh, when it comes to some. Remember one more time. Some we are going to use it for positive and any. We are going to use it for negative and also for questions. Hay algunas excepciones that we will discover later on. Las excepciones que vamos a ver luego. All right. Here we have, as you can see here, como pueden ver acá, 
we are using the word any for questions. So any, it can be used in the negative sentences and also for questions. I have the example over here. He doesn't need any stamps. Do you have any friends in Chicago? Is there, is there any pollution in your city? Fijan always, siempre el any, it will be used for negative and for questions. Keep that in mind, please. And here we come to the exceptions. Here we have some exceptions where we are going to use some and where are we going to use any. Estas son excepciones that I need you to remember them. I need you to remember them and for the next time you are going to know already the information. So let's go with the first part. It says, use some in questions when offering or requesting. Cuando, ten, uh, cuando hagamos una pregunta para ofrecer o para solicitar, we are going to use some en preguntas tales como la siguiente. If I tell you, would you like some bread? Estoy ofreciendo. Te gustaría o quisieras, would you like, te gustaría un poco de pan, some bread? Estoy ofreciendo. What about a request? If I said, could I have some water? Podría tener agua? Could I have some water? Do you understand that part? Yeah. This too is the Yes. Ahí no importa si es contable o no contable. Exactly. These, estas, son excepciones. Solamente ah, okay. cuando, cuando hagas pregunta, si la pregunta va a ser una oferta. Porque si te fijas acá, tenemos bread, que el pan puede ser. Is it countable or not countable? Bread. Contable. 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 Is it contable? ¿Puedo contar yo el pan? No. Can I or, or I can? Eh, si dijera en algún lugar en específico, posiblemente sí. All right. Very good. Pero lo está generalizando. Exactly. Can I count the water? No. Uncountable. So, mm -hmm. algo que quiero que recuerden, something that I want you to remember, guys, it is that only when it comes to questions, offering, and requesting, those are the two exceptions where you are going to use the word some. Estos son los únicos dos that you can use some. Porque ya saben que para preguntas utilizamos cuál? Some or any? Any. All right. Any. Utilizamos any. Pero esas dos are the two exceptions that we have. So, when it comes to any, vamos a ver cuáles son las excepciones para any. It says, use any in positive sentences. When the sense, when the real sense is negative. Vamos a utilizar any cuando el sentido real, aun cuando el sentido real de la oración esté negativo. Let's see. Let's understand. Vamos a entender. It says, example, I refuse to give him any money. Que en otras palabras sería... Me rehuso a darle dinero. En este caso es como si yo es eh, el sentido de la oración. Me rehuso desde ahí, desde ese momento de rehusarse. El sentido real de la oración está en negativo. Aunque nosotros en la oración como tal no veamos ningún tipo de negación. Tales como don't, tales como not. Yes. 
aunque no veamos ese tipo de negaciones, el sentido de la oración está en negativo. I don't know if you get the idea, guys. I'm trying to explain you like in Spanish so you can understand that well. Are you understanding? Is it clear? You have any question? Ask the questions right now. There's no question? Yo no entendí. <laughs> you didn't? No. Okay. Solo sería con esa palabra. Me rehuso. Exactly. O en general. Exactamente, porque desde el momento que utilizas el verbo rehusarte, ya estás hablando negativamente de, la, de lo que vas a hacer. Me rehusé a darle dinero. Y el sentido, el sentido que le damos cuando decimos eso es negativo. Pero cuando viene a gramática, no está en negativo. ¿O pueden verlo ustedes negativo? No. No, right. Eso no. es lo que quiero que entiendan. Solo el sentido real de la oración está negativa. Pero cuando hablamos gramaticalmente, la oración está positiva. Teacher, quiere decir que any prácticamente se usa para negativo y para hacer oraciones sin esas excepciones. Exacto. Para preguntas y, y para negativo. Y solamente. Y son solo para positiva. Exacto. Solo para positivo, exceptuando estas excepciones. Estas reglas. Ah, ok. All right. So, if there is no more question, guys, so I'm going to go now. Oh, this one, I think that is already clear. So, here we have to just some ways to create some sentences, some questions. I'm sorry. General. Uh, examples of how to create some questions. For example, we have right here, did you know any famous people? ¿Conoces alguna persona famosa? Do you have any children? ¿Tienes algún, algún niño o algunos niños? Or we have, would you like some coffee? Vamos a ver if you understood. Si yo digo, would you like some coffee? Is that a request or is that an offer? Offer. 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 Very good. And if I said, do you want some sugar for your coffee? Is that a request or is that an offer? Offer. 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 Very good. Offer. Offer. Very good. So, as you can see there, there's just some examples of how to create some question when it comes to um, some and end. Recuérdense, negatives and questions, or any, positives, or some. Y con las excepciones, en algunas, vamos a utilizar some. Here, it is the full. Eso es todo. Here we have the full information. Toda la información that I just said, toda la información que yo acabo de decir, here is. Like a rest, like the general information, like pretty much everything that we just saw, right? So here it comes your practice. We still have uh, like 12 minutes. So I will request you once again to take a picture, to take a screenshot and let me know when it's done. Listo. Here we have. Is it done? Yes. And a lot. Of 
in this part, in, in uh, yes. part number three, you only have to use some or any. The first part, it is only, it is the four of them, A and some or any. And this one, you are going to use lo que vimos ayer. Ay, there is, oh. there are, plus A and some or any. And here, you only have to put some or any. Okay. No. So, okay. we have uh, 11 minutes. Yeah. 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 We are 22. Let me see. Yeah. All right, guys. Please go ahead and join your groups and try to speak in English if you can and try to complete the exercises. I will be checking uh, some of your groups. Teacher, ¿puedo poner otra imagen para tomar la foto? one eh, sí. y la primera espera y la primera esa espera thank you Teacher, please. Teacher. La, la, la primera imagen. All right. Let me go ahead and share. Yes, here you have. Thanks, teacher. Thank you. Thank you. What happened, Gloria? Were you not able to join your group? No me apareció el cojito, no lo tengo para darle clic para unirme al grupo. Okay, let me see. Try to see if you got it. Yes. There is a big, pienso yo que es la una. There is, there is a big bed uh -huh, uh -huh. in my room and some, 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 some pillows. Any pillows. Uh, any pillow. Uh, en mí solo se usa para negativo. Entonces, some. Sería, some. Sería, some. Some pillow. On it there is. Added. Es almohadas. Okay. 
sería como en... Tengo una cama grande. Y... Almohada, prácticamente. Eh, disculpe, compañero. En la primera quedó Deris a Big. Sí, correcto. A Big. A Big. En la segunda sería... In my room, en... Eh, en... Uh, en pillows. En pillows, ya. En pillows. Uh -huh. La otra no. creo que sí sería Dex. Our chair es como un sofá chiquito, creo que es el our chair. En chair es una. There is all any. Así que si no me equivoco, any es para el negativo. Uh -huh. Ahí sería A N. Any. Entonces, sí. Entonces en la suelta faltaría, o sea, oh, quiero ver. No, no está. No porque ya lleva el a golf, a ah, ah, disco. Ah, oh, sí, sí, sí. Ah, pero en la. Ah, no, 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 pero estamos viendo la Estoy primera. Está en el R. sí, sí, lo lleva, Gold. lleva las dos cosas. Ajá. Entonces, sí, Entonces, there, aquí there sería... are. Uy, there aren't any shops. Ajá, there aren't any shops. Ok. Y ahí es bar, ¿verdad? Entonces sería sí. There is A bar There is a bar, ¿verdad? Sí, there is a bar Is a bar Y el otro también There is a restaurant En los otros dos ah, no, no, Bueno, sí, en los otros dos, ¿verdad? También there is a restaurant Y there, there is, is a, a coffee ca Café, café, algo así. Café, ajá. No, pero... 
Pero si sí se refiere a coffee, no. guys i know that probably you didn't complete them all because of the time but at least the first part that we have for today and that's a progress okay so we are going to see what happens with the first part let me go ahead and share this So, this is the first part. Okay. So, I will need some help, guys. I'm going to tell your name and you're going to give me the answer that you found or that you found for this exercise. Let me see. I'm going to say Roxana, number one, Beatriz Inocente, number two. Catherine Ramirez, number three. Kenya Lopez, number four. Two, four. Number five, Tatiana. Number six, Mario. Number seven, Eduardo. Number eight, Kelia. Number nine, Rosa Maya. And the last one, Angelica Last. So please go ahead, guys. Let me see what you have. I have a big room too. His blue um, blue is my favorite color. There is a big bed in my room. And Leave it there. Leave it there. Number two. And some pillows on it. Okay, very good. Leave it there. Some pillows in on it. Number three. There is a desk book. Desk. There is a desk. Very good. The next one, number four. Number four. Volunteers. But there isn't any book house in my room. Very good. But there isn't any bookcase in my room. Very good. Number five. There is Elsa and, and chair. Okay, leave it there. There is also an armchair. Very good. And? And some curtains some in front curtains. of the one on the windows. Very good. Window. Cartings in front of Cart the window. Very good. The next one. In front of. In front of. There aren't any, any paintings. There, the any paint there, on the wall. Very good. There aren't any paintings on the wall. Any paintings on the wall. On the wall. Very good. The next one. But there are some poster. Very posters. Good. But there are some posters. Very good. The next one. Okay. okay, go ahead. There are some toys in a box, but there isn't. Very good. And the last one? But there isn't any carpet on the floor. Very good. There are some toys in a box, but there isn't any carpet on the floor. What's your favorite room? Write some Jack. Okay, I think that it was really simple, right? Very easy to do it. And we still have uh, two exercises more that we are going to complete them 
and the class of tomorrow, okay? When we start the class, we're going to start completing the exercises. So thank you so much, guys, once again, for attending to the class. Thank you so much for participating. And do not forget to keep working on the platform. Once again, if you have questions or something that you do not understand, please let me know and I will help you out. So thank you so much once again and have a good night. See you tomorrow. Good night. Good night. Bye. Good night. Good night.